All right, hello guys. Um, we're back on Compound Angle Formula. Our job is to wrap up this topic. As I did promise you, I told you that the exam might not give you the angles in degrees. They might give you in radians, and so you're going to have to be vigilant. Now, what I've written here is a special angles for you, 45 degrees, 30 degrees, 60 degrees. These are only three of the special angles that you might have to combine. But I've also given, given you their degree measurement and their radian measurement, all right? Now, here's what a typical question could look like. So what if I ask you for the tangent of 5 pi over 12? All right, now, right away, you guys might not exactly know what angle this is in degrees. And I did give you a special and easy way to replace, to find out what angle it is. All you have to do is use your calculator and replace the pi with 180. If you replace the pi with 180, you're going to find out that this is 75 degrees. Now, look at those special angles. Is there any angles there I can combine to get 75 degrees? Mm -hmm. We could combine 45 degrees and we could combine 30 degrees. So, it means I can write this thing now as a tangent. Bear in mind, look, 45 degrees is pi over 4 and 30 degrees is pi over 6. So, the tangent of pi over 4 plus pi over 6. Good? So now I need to recall the compound angular formula for tan A plus B. So recall tan A plus B, the bracket must be there, is equal to tan A plus tan B all over all over 1 minus tan A tan B. Good. How does this apply to this scenario? So I can say that the tangent of pi over 4 plus pi over 6 is equal to, I can replace my a with pi over 4 and my b with pi over 6. So this is going to give me tan pi over 4 plus tan pi over 6 all over 1 minus tan pi over 4 tan pi over 6. Now, the tangent of pi over 4, we should know this would give me 1. The tangent of pi over 6, that will be root 3 over 3. So all of this goes over 1 minus 1 times root 3 over 3. Alright. Let's break this down. We could now split this thing and say 1 plus root 3 over 3, all of this divided by 1 minus root 3 over 3. Alright, as you know, we're going to have to find the LCM for the first bracket. So we could put these two ones over 1. My LCM there would be 3. And we know 1 into 3 is 3. 3 into 3 is 1, so I get root 3 there, divided by... What you have here is a similar concept. The only difference being is that you have a minus. So pretty much it's going to be the same thing. Just that you'll have 3 minus root 3. Alright. When we divide fractions, we multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction. So you have 3 plus root 3 over 3 times 3 over 3 minus root 3. Good. And we can reduce this. 3 into 3 is 1. Into 3 is 1. So I'm going to have 3 plus root 3 over 3 minus root 3. All right, here we have a third in the denominator. So we're going to have to rationalize this thing using the conjugate of the denominator, which is 3 plus root 3 over 3 plus root 3. As you know, we can only multiply by 1. Simplify this. All right, now, once again, let me remind you that the denominator here is a difference of two squares, and that is a concept that we must master by now. So I'm going to have 3 squared minus root 3 squared. The numerator is a perfect square. And if I want, I could use the perfect square to expand it. But we can also go the long way here. So 3 times 3, that's 9. Plus 3 times root 3, that's 3 root 3. Plus root 3 times 3, that's 3 root 3 as well. Plus root 3 times root 3, that is going to give me root 3 squared. Okay. Now... Here we can simplify the numerator. I'm going to have 9 plus 6 root 3 plus root 3 squared there. 
is going to give me 3. All over, that's going to give me 9 minus 3. Looking at the like terms in the numerator, 9 plus 3 is 12. Plus 6 root 3, all over 6. And of course, we can divide that 6 into both terms in the numerator there. So this is going to give me 2 plus root 3. And that is my final answer. All right, now let us look at the cosine of 7 pi over 12. Really and truly, um, once again, if you're not sure what angle this is in degrees, you can replace a pi with 180, right? And it will tell you that it's going to be 105 degrees. So your question now is, what two special angles do I combine to get 105 degrees? It must be 60 and 45. So I can break this into the cosine of 60, which you know is going to be pi over 3 plus 45 degrees, which I already know is pi over 4. And recall, of course, recall that the cosine of A plus B is equal to cosine A, cosine B, minus sine A, sine B. Alright, once again, by comparison, you will recognize that my A will be pi over 3 and my B will be pi over 4. So this implies that the cosine of pi over 3 plus pi over 4 is going to be cosine pi over 3 cosine pi over 4 minus sine pi over 3 sine pi over 4. Now the cosine of pi over 3 is going to give me a half the cosine of pi over 4 is going to give me root 2 over 2 minus the sine of pi over 3 is going to give me root 3 over 2 and the sine of pi over 4 is going to give me root 2 over 2 all right so this now is going to become if we multiply the numerators we get root 2 over 4 minus root 6 over 4 which when I take this down I'm going to end up with root 2 minus root 6 all over 4 right and this of course doesn't require rationalization so this is where we start okay. let us look at the second example if a is obtuse and b is acute now once you read that your mind should be telling you that an obtuse angle is between 90 and 180 a is acute it means that it's between 0 and and 90 so it's in the first quadrant so i could even go right ahead and start setting up my quadrant to match this question all right so this is my quadrant a is obtuse it will automatically find itself in the second quadrant all right so this is my a here they gave us sine a which is 3 over 5 and sine is opposite so this is 3 and up here is 5 and by Pythagorean tried down here would automatically be 4. And because of the direction where I'm going, it would actually be a negative 4 right there, as you can see. Now, B is acute, so B is going to find itself in the first quadrant. So I put in my B. Bear in mind that this must be a right angle triangle. We are also told that sine B is equal to 12 over 13. So opposite again is 12. The hypotenuse is 13. Pythagorean tried to make this side down here 5. Now, note briefly, we, we are supposed to know what the Pythagorean triads are. So you have like 6, 8, 10, you have 3, 4, 5, you have 5, 12, 13, and there are so many more. Mm -hmm. Now, my job is to find the tangent of A minus B. So let us go right ahead and find that. So recall that the tangent of A minus B would actually be equal to tan A minus tan B over 1 plus the tangent of A tangent of b all right good go to your triangle now i go to your quadrants and bear in mind all science teachers crazy all right so that tells you what is negative anywhere and even the signs will help you to figure it out so if i were to go tan of a tan is opposite over adjacent so i would have 3 over negative 4 minus the tangent of b opposite there is 12 so that's 12 over 5 and all this now now, all this would go over 
1 plus, we found the tangent of here already, so we know it's 3 over negative 4, right? Times the tangent of B, which is 12 over 5. So this is now just a matter of calculator work. My numerator there would give me negative 63 over 20. And my denominator here would give me would give me um negative 4 over 5. So this now would give me 63 over 16. Now, if you look at this, we could also ask you to construct a proof. Look at it. Prove that whatever is on the left here is equal to what is on the right. Now, normally to construct a proof, we normally take the more complex side and try to break it down. So we have sine pi over 4 plus a. We have sine pi over 4 minus a. All right. By now, we should know the compound angle formula for sine. So I'm going to be taking the left-hand side. And probably you don't want to recall that sine of a plus b, or can I say, I can just do one thing, is equal to sine a cos b plus or minus sine b cos a. So if it is plus in the bracket, it's going to plus, be plus between the terms. So if I look at these two brackets, my pi over 4 will be my a but my a will be my b so in other words wherever i see a i'm going to put what pi over 4 and where i see b i'm going to put a so the left hand side is going to look like this it's going to be sine pi over 4 cos a plus sine a cos pi over 4 that is for my first bracket here in red now my second bracket, which is I'm gonna put in green here, when I expand that, it's gonna become sine pi over four cos a minus. So the sine comes back in the middle here. Sine a cos pi over four. Alright, let us go down now and see if we can break this down. We know that the sine of pi over four is root 2 over 2 so it's root 2 over 2 cos a plus the cos of pi over 4 is also root 2 over 2 so it's root 2 over 2 sine a as well plus the sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2 cos a minus the cos of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2 sine a now Look for the like terms. Hmm? This term here would cancel this term here. So what I have is root 2 over 2 cos a plus root 2 over 2 cos a. All right. So they are the same thing. We have two of them. So what we have is 2 root 2 over 2 cos a. All right, now this two with that two, so this becomes root two cos a, which is exactly what we had on the right hand side. As if we go back up there, that is what we wanted it to be. So we can now say what the left hand side is equal to the right hand side q e d that which has been proven.